no matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You guys are watching Raider Sports. It's Raiders mailbag time. So this is your opportunity to get your questions, your comments featured on the show. All you got to do is join me every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Pacific. You can use hashtag Raiders or you can super chat or you can go to Magic Spoon and make sure you guys get some healthy cereal. Save $5 off. That link is available for you all in the comments and in the description. MagicSpoon.com slash Raiders. First one's coming in here from Hashim. Leatherwood had me pissed. Yeah, you and me both. He had the entire nation pissed. Not only was he not really playing well, he was also making rookie mistakes, and he was making big-time mistakes when it mattered the most. Now, sure, he's a rookie, but when you're drafted in the first round, when you go to Alabama, you expect to be ready for those types of situations. Let's face it, he was bad. Top beats. Yo, Mitch, drink water. Do you think that car needs to throw more to Edwards' rugs than always targeting Waller as his first look? He has a great tight end, but... I, I hear you there. There was probably, a, I'll say, five throws where I was like, Carr forced that. And Carr, the entire time, s stared down Waller, stared him down, stared him down, still tried to force it in. Now, sometimes you can do that when you have a player like him because on, on even bad balls, like he's going to be able to at least break it up or give you a chance. But I anticipate them to target probably Brian Edwards a little bit more because he played a lot better down the stretch of that game. So I, I initially said that I think Ruggs could end up getting more targets and more yards. I might go ahead and switch that Brian Edwards, though. But, yes, I'm going to get some water. Let's go to Gruden's Grinders here. Mitch, I know what you need. Go home, grab your gal, and get your comfies and some snacks and aqua and relax while watching some Bachelor in Paradise. I will not watch Bachelor in Paradise, though. My girlfriend does love the regular Bachelor show. But uh, when I go home, I'm going to see my dog Chuck and give him a big hug. We're going to go for a little walk. And then, yeah, I'm probably going to sleep for a solid, I don't know, 8, 9, 10 hours if I can. And then I got a bright and early day tomorrow with a lot of Raiders videos and a lot of NFL stuff. But don't worry. No days off here. I got you. Next one's coming in from Mr. Emerald123. Hey, Mitch, our defense looked great. If Paul Gunther was still our defensive coordinator, we'd have definitely lost last night. 100% agree. Also, do you guys have any more Gus Bus shirts? Yes, I do. In fact, if anybody's watching right now, if you go to chatsports.com slash Gus, I believe is how you go ahead and get a Gus Bus shirt. Literally, all it is, it's a picture of a shirt, or a picture of a shirt. It's a picture of a bus, and it says Gus. So I made these Gus Bus shirts last year because I was hyped up about the defense. But uh, the defense definitely played a lot better. It was a lot more controlled, also not too many big plays. But that's because guys knew their assignments. The Raiders, I believe, on third down were 9 of 12. So getting the Ravens off the field on third down was very clutch. The Gonzo 6, should we get the Castro for right guard? David DeCastro is the big name. He was once time probably one of the best right ta or right guards in the entire league. Also, growing up in the Pennsylvania area, I had a lot of my friends, big-time Steeler fans, and they hyped him up, and he's a very good player. If you go look around at a lot of places, they'll have DeCastro rated as the top guard. The issue is I don't know how 100% healthy he is. I mean, he's had three very significant leg injuries plus his contemplated retirement. So when you see somebody as good as Castro and he's still available, it's a red flag. To me, it means that he's not healthy. Nick Easton, Joe Dahl. That's where I'm going. This one's coming in from Beezer12, Washing Beard. Mitch, be real with me. What's up with Furl? I mean, I think what's up with him is I actually think that he had maybe a little bit of an ailment that wasn't totally discussed and wasn't 100% sure what was happening because Furl's also been on the injury report plenty of times this offseason. But if it was a healthy scratch, that's very concerning. But you've also seen the Raiders say, hey, if you guys aren't ready to play, if you're not practicing well for me, you're not going to be out there on the field. So the fact that they looks like they've already kind of moved on from Damon Arnett, who only played him one snap, and if Furl was, in fact, a healthy scratch, I mean, you're talking about two very high draft picks that already could be done with this Las Vegas team. So if you haven't already, y'all, please go ahead and subscribe for more free Raiders videos plus live watch parties. I'm going to be live for the Raiders and Steelers game, so I don't want you guys to miss that. We did over 100,000 views during our Monday Night Football. In fact, I do want to give a major shout-out to everyone that came to Tailgate Social and everyone that made to us the number one most watched Monday Night Football stream on YouTube. That's an amazing accomplishment. Over 100,000 people. We gained, 100, or I believe, 1,000 more subs. But if this is maybe the first time you've ever come across one of our videos or if you watch the show all the time but you don't subscribe, subscribing helps us out a lot. So I would really appreciate it. It's how we can keep the show for free. Let's go to the next one coming in here from Alexander DeLorea. Raiders, what did you think of Nate Hobbs and Abram? So uh, Hobbs had some good... Good opportunities. I, I like the energy that Hobbs brings, and Abram brings more energy than anyone. Now, did Abram overcommit on a few passing plays? Yes, he did. But 
I thought they both played okay. If I were to go ahead and give them a grade, I'd probably say Hobbs was a C plus. I'd give Abram a C. Remember, my grading skills, A is great, B is good, C is average. And I thought they played average football. But I still want to see a little bit more out of Abram because he needs to, he just needs to be a little bit better in coverage. If he can just be a little bit better in coverage, then he won't make me so damn nervous all the time. What up, Zornell? It's time to trade Cleveland Furl. The issue is, what are you going to trade for him? I mean, there's nobody out there really right now that probably wants much for him. I mean... You drafted him again, number four overall, and his contract, he's set to make $9 million. Nobody's going to go ahead and take on that type of deal. So if you're willing to just throw him away for nothing, maybe that's what you got to do. But, I mean, I, I would trade Damon Arnett before I trade Cleveland Furl personally because Furl at least has shown that he's been a halfway decent player with the Raiders. I mean, last season, the 16th best DE, according to PFF. JT Douglas in Gok way. Unfortunately, that's not how you pronounce it. So you'll see not Gok. I know you keep saying that, but he literally said in an interview, it's Gok way. I mean, it's, I've talked to, I've talked to people that know Yannick. So hate to break it to you. You're wrong. Uh, what do I get when you find out you've been pronouncing it wrong? It's, uh, it's not wrong, homie. Go ahead. Look it up. You can talk to Gok way himself. He literally said it's unique Gok way. Now, today's show, again, y'all, is presented by Magic Spoon. If you love cereal out there, if you're looking for something healthy in your life, I recommend going ahead and getting the variety of four-pack. It's high in protein. Plus, if you can outsmart it, if you get the variety four-pack, I always tell people mix the peanut butter and cocoa, mix the frosted with some cinnamon. I mean, you get all these different amazing types of flavors. But after the week that I had, and you guys are probably like me, where if you go, like, on a trip, being able to pack some cereal actually, believe it or not, is a very effective way to also be able to eat healthy, especially when it's low in carb, only 4 grams of net carbs per bowl. Plus, I had a few people message me like, dude, this stuff is absolutely incredible. And I wish I remembered his name, but he messaged me on Instagram. He's like, dude, I ate two boxes the very first day I got it. So if you're looking for a healthy deal, magicspoon.com slash Raiders. <clears throat> As my voice squeaks, I'm just now hitting puberty again. But this does take me back to my puberty days when I was 13 years old eating cereal all the time. The only thing about this stuff is is, it's actually good for you. Please go try it out. You're not going to regret it. And actually, if you don't like it, send it back. You get your money back. 100% guaranteed. Everyday Jam. Should the Raiders sign Larry Warford? Another player who, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know how 100% healthy he is, but if he is healthy, he's a good player. But I, I don't feel like he's even a free agent. I could be wrong on that, though. I'll, I'll go ahead and look after the show. What's up, Christopher McGuire? I can see Renfro being a mismatch for the Steelers if they double Waller. They're going to double Waller. Heck, there was times even this past game where the Ravens were tripling Waller. If, if you want to go ahead and beat Pittsburgh, I mean, they got two good cornerbacks. They have two very good safeties as well, and they got good pass rushes, obviously, in T.J. Watt. With the, with the ability to be able to pass rush that the Steelers have and with the offensive line the Raiders have right now being very suspect, I anticipate a lot of quick routes coming out. So whether it's going to be a lot of Kenyon Drake, whether it's going to be a lot of Renfro, you're going to see a lot of intermediate routes in this one and really Derek trying to get rid of it quick. What up, Robert TP? Hey, Mitch, can you send a shout-out to my little Raiders, uh, Robert and Layla, who watch your channel with me? Everyone down in the comments, give a shout-out to Robert. Give a shout-out to Layla. That's what it's all about. The amount of family. The, I met this one guy in Vegas. I'm going to go on a tangent here a little bit, who literally was like, hey, man, we watch your show all the time. And I remember growing up with my dad, we'd watch Smart Guy at dinner. And this guy literally was like, we, every single dinner, we sit down and watch the Raiders board. That is probably the coolest thing ever. So if you watch this show with your son, with your daughter, family's everything to me. So shout out to Robert, shout out to Layla. Much love to y'all. Let's go to Elias Rosenthal. How do we get the running game going? You need to find guys that can block on the interior. Colt Miller, I thought, literally was one of the best left tackles in the entire game. He was absolutely incredible. The right side did not play all that well. Leatherwood, the center, Andre James. I mean, if your center is struggling as bad as what James did, that's really going to put a lot more extra pressure on your guards. And then when your guards are even back up, I mean, that's the biggest issue. Jacobs, I thought, played well for the most part. He definitely wasn't 100% healthy, but he had a few cutbacks and he had a few runs. We're like, okay, that guy's really legit. But it's also really tough on your running backs when – you're basically running the ball, and they're getting hit right away. I think it's also one of the reasons why Derek Carr threw the ball over 50 times. Sure, the Raiders were trailing in that game, but even when it was close, they were they were throwing the ball because they were not confident in that interior. So speaking of D.C., okay, I like this one. It's Corey Lee. Why for yes and for no? I mean, after having a game where 435 passing yards, two touchdowns, let a touchdown drive, he played a lead in my opinion. He played bad in the first quarter, but in the second quarter played better. Third quarter played very good. Fourth quarter, absolutely, he played a leap. And then overtime, you have to say the exact same thing. He played a lead. He basically led two touchdown drives in overtime. So I don't know if he's still an elite quarterback, 
But he played like a top 10 guy, and he played elite on, on Monday Night Football, and that's when it matters the most. Danny Rango, what up, brother? Update on Diablo. I don't really have much of an update on you. I mean, he just didn't play in this game. I mean, they, they didn't want to go with him. The Raiders were confident in some of their other players that they had out there at the linebacker position. So maybe he's not 100% healthy. Maybe they're going to punt the brakes. But, I mean, sooner or later, we got to get some of these young draft picks that were drafting high. they got to get out there on the field, man. James Ford, what do you think of Ha Ha Clint Dix signing? So it's funny. I was out at lunch or I think it was breakfast or something like that, when the Raiders sign Ha Ha Clinton Dix, and always my favorite joke is, oh, Monica's going to absolutely love this signing, right? If you don't know that joke, Monica, Clinton Dix, come on, you guys can put it together. Um, but I, I was literally eating dinner, and I was like, oh, shit, I got to run out real quick on the strip. We were at the Link Promenade, and I'm like, I'm just going to film something really quick. It's good depth. I'm not going to expect too much out of Dix simply because he's been bouncing around. He tried to play with the Raiders. He tried to play with the Cowboys, and he was once a good dude, once a good player. But the fact that, again, that he's not been 100% healthy, the fact that he's been also reported out of shape, it's a depth move right now. But could be an interesting box safety type of move. That's why the Raiders went out and did it. Go to Slider Holiday. Could never get a slider down when I used to pitch. Would you package Cleveland Furl and Damon Arnett to upgrade our offensive line? Who would you get in that package? So the issue is who wants Cleveland Furl and who wants Damon Arnett? I know that they're both first-round picks or former first-round picks, but there's not really going to be too many people out there like, ooh, those are two guys that I want. If I could trade both of them to get a pretty good offensive line and a pretty good offensive guard, I would do it in a heartbeat. However, Nobody out there is going to be like, I want Cleveland Furl, and nobody out there is going to say, hey, I want Damon Arnett. If you could get a fourth-round pick for Arnett and a third-round pick for Furl, I would do that. However, I would be shocked if a team gave anybody – I would be shocked if the Raiders got a third or a fourth for Clee and if they got a fifth-round pick for Damon Arnett. I don't think any team out there would ever give up a fifth-round pick for Arnett right now. So if you guys are loving what we're doing here at Chat Sports and the Raiders Report, you can always hit me up on Instagram, at MitchellRens365. If you want to drink a beer with me the next time I'm in Las Vegas, I believe the next time I'll be in Vegas is for the Bears game week five. Unfortunately, I guess I shouldn't say unfortunately, uh, one of my buddies is getting married. It was, the, it was the bachelor party that I went to in Nashville, Tennessee with all those freaking Chiefs, Chiefs fans. But uh, week three against the Dolphins, I'll still do a show on that Sunday. I might be a little bit hungover because I'll be at the wedding, but that I can't go to the I can't go to Las Vegas that weekend. At least it's that's how it looks right now. Bottom line, hit me up on IG, y'all. I appreciate y'all. All right, let's go to Christopher McGuire. Mitch, are you surprised that when the Raiders were at the one yard line, they didn't use Drake in the quarterback position instead of Carr, quarterback QB sneak? I mean, I actually thought about the idea of them trying to QB sneak, but. When the, I think the biggest reason why they didn't do it is because they weren't confident in James and they weren't confident in their guys being able to really get the push because the entire game, the Ravens were absolutely kicking our interior offensive lines butt. So if, if you're not confident in us being able to pick up a yard, that's why they didn't go ahead and do that. But I, I understand what you're saying. Let's go to the last question here. P fights Demon. Where do you think the Raiders' D will end up in the rankings? I, I, I was super impressed with the way that they finished out that game. If they play the way that they did finishing out that game, they play like a top 10 defense, and that's not a crazy thing to say. To be able to hold Lamar Jackson and that offense to 13 points for three quarters and then overtime, very, very impressive. I'm still going to say they're going to be around somewhere like 15, 16, but if they play the way they did to finish out that game, no reason they can't be top 10.